Uh, let's move on to the next presentation, which will be from uh, Jennifer Wade and Robin Reichlin. Uh, Jennifer and Robin are program directors in NSF's Division of Earth Science. Um, Jennifer is petrology in, um, is in petrology and geochemistry, and Robin is in geophysics and cooperative studies of the Earth's deep interior, uh, the latter of which is a multidisciplinary program that supports high temperature geochemistry, mineral physics, and other disciplines. So uh, Jennifer and Robin, it's all yours. Okay, so hi everybody. Uh, it is really nice to be spending a couple of days hearing about all this good science instead of writing up paperwork. Um, and I'm sorry if there's noise in the background here. Um, so uh, we're gonna give you some news from NSF and EAR, uh, the higher, higher temperature part. So we know Enriqueta Barrera spoke yesterday um, and Robin and I are here today. I'm gonna talk and she's here to help me answer any questions that might come up. So, so if you were here yesterday, I'm gonna repeat a little bit um, of what Enriqueta said, but also talk about uh, petrology and geochemistry and CSET egg. So just as a reminder, sort of, um, you know, we are, we're in the Division of Earth Sciences, which is part of the Directorate for Geosciences. Um, I partly put this up because one of the programs I'm gonna talk about today is, um, is a multi-directorate program that involves geo, uh, biological sciences, engineering, and math and physical sciences, which is where chemistry is. But we are in uh, EAR. Um, which is sort of broken down like this. So there are disciplinary programs and integrated activities. And as I said, Enriqueta talked to you yesterday about geobiology and low temperature geochemistry. Robin and I are from um, petrology and geochemistry and cooperative studies of the Earth's deep interior. So we're gonna talk about those, sort of what those programs are, um, what we're seeing in the program these days. And then I'm also gonna talk about critical aspects of sustainability which is a um, new opportunity that is cross-directorate that I mentioned earlier. So in petrology and geochemistry, um, you know, we support basic research on rocks and processes, you know, all the way from the formation of the planet through its evolution to today. Um, a lot of igneous and metamorphic petrology and geochemistry, mineral physics, economic geology and volcanology. And we support everything, development of, of analytical tools, theoretical and computational models, experimental techniques, uh, very broad program. Um, we were asked sort of what are some areas of high interest? These are just a few things that we're seeing a lot in the program right now. This is not a comprehensive list. Again, if you look at our solicitation, we sort of accept everything, but we're seeing a lot of, um, you know, application of planetary stuff to the study of, um, you know, planetary science to the study of our own planet's evolution new methods and heavy stable isotopes, a lot of microanalysis applied to melt inclusions and diffusion chronometry, um, some very cool computational x-ray tomography um, and quantitative textual analysis, and then physical volcanology and economic geology really are uh, growing rapidly. It's been really interesting, especially to see the sort of rebound in economic geology of late. Uh, cooperative studies of the Earth's deep interior, which is um, Robin's program in addition to geophysics um, is really about the character and dynamics of the earth's mantle and core, right? So how do they influence the evolution of the earth as a whole? Um, and how does do processes in the earth's deep interior impact what happens on the surface? So the scope is really planetary scale processes. And again, much like trilogy from the earth's formation all the way to its present day state. Um, again, some examples of high interest you know, early earth formation and evolution, comparative planetary studies, um, high P and T experiments, um, you know, looking at conditions that haven't been achievable up till now in the lab, uh, a lot of work on the core and the geodynamo, um, abundance and impact of water and other volatiles on deep earth dynamics and then deep mantle structure, uh, especially near the core mantle boundary. And sort of, as I said, how that those play a role in global geodynamics. So those are the two programs that we, are here representing and, and um, are interested in. Um, I also wanted to mention this critical aspects of sustainability. And I know that Enriqueta talked about this yesterday. Um, it's a multi-directorate program. So GEO, MPS, that's uh, math and physical sciences. Again, that's like where chemistry and, some, and physics are. Engineering and then biological sciences are all part of this. And GEO's interest is really critical minerals and materials in the earth. 
And I've put here sort of what the goals of this program are. So identifying new sources of critical minerals, understanding their pathway in the natural environment, um, and then how they're concentrated by either earth processes or geobiological processes, and then developing methods for sustainable exploration of those critical minerals and materials. Um, so these studies can be anything, basically lab field modeling, um, and they're really interested in training next generation scientists. I would put, I don't, it doesn't have a number, the opportunity doesn't have a number, but if you Google NSF, Critical Aspects of Sustainability, you'll find it. Our, our website is so terrible that honestly, even as an internal person, I Google to find most of our <laughs> solicitations because it's just easier that way. Um, so we wanted to make sure, especially that this community was aware of that. Um, and then we also wanted to just highlight a few priorities, both from our director and from, um, from the Biden administration, because this is really going to impact what happens over the coming years, right? So we have a new director, relatively new director, um, Dr. Panchanathan, we call him Panch, and his three pillars are really advancing the frontiers of research, ensuring accessibility and inclusivity, and then continuing global leadership. So he's really into partnerships, um, both internally and across agency and internationally. And then the Biden administration priorities, which are also really um, impacting sort of how we think about the future of NSF, of course, addressing the pandemic, which we've been doing for over a year um, as Enriqueta, and I think Russ mentioned this also, the um, Via Jedi initiative, which really, there's been a lot of broadening participation work in the agency already, but this is of course, uh, since last year, getting a big thrust. So belonging, accessibility, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion is driving a lot um, of what's happening in the agency right now. Uh, economic recovery from this pandemic and of course climate change, um, which the Division of Earth Sciences will have a big role in. So all of these, um, you know, these four pillars or what they're calling them um, will probably impact a lot in the coming couple of years or at least four years, uh, including this new directorate. So, um, oh, I wrote NS, it should be NSF's new potential uh, directorate, right? This technology innovation and partnerships um, which I think this community really may have a, a, a significant role in. There's potential for it. So you can read about it in the, in the budget request for fiscal 22. Um, this is about advancing science and engineering research and innovation for breakthrough technologies um, and translating discoveries from lab to market, which is an interesting shift for the agency. Um, creating more educational pathways uh, for jobs, um, supporting a diverse workforce, and again, this partnership idea that, um, that our director is really interested in. So catalyzing partnerships between academia, industry, the government, and other investors like philanthropists and, uh, and organizations that are outside um, what we have done in the past. So this will be interesting to watch evolve. Um, again, it's just in the budget request, so it hasn't been implemented yet, but we are keeping a close eye on it. And I think that is my update from NSF. And I, we are definitely happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Um, yeah. uh, let's see, do we have any questions? Uh, I can certainly start with one, and, and the last slide was uh, quite interesting. Uh, so, well, well, first of all, where? So, can you just elaborate a little bit where we just bring up everyone up to speed as to where we are? The Senate has passed this, but the House has not. Is that is that correct? I think that's right um, because the the um, the budget for for twenty two has not at all been uh, appropriated yet, so it's all just in theory. But um, but we have some ideas of of what it would look like. And already people are talking about what parts of the agency that exists now will be reconfigured and what new parts will come in from the outside. Um, so it's a lot of uncertainty. The, the details are in the budget request, but anyone if who has, uh, oh, I see Jim Evans says they passed. House bills are different from the Senate. Oh yeah, so there's gonna take some <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> negotiating. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, you know what, very often what's in the request is different from what actually gets enacted. So I take all of this with a grain of salt. 
and until we see a um, until we see a a clear actual budget and the directive uh, in that budget, it's hard to say. <laughs> it's hard to say. Yeah. Okay. There's a question. Uh, just wondering, what are critical minerals? Oh, so um, there's a um, there are a bunch of economically uh, useful minerals that the Department of Interior has uh, has designated in the past. Um, so it includes a lot of like rare element heavy minerals. I know like even aluminum bearing minerals, um, anything basically that um, is used in economic uh, or technology endeavors. Um, if you look at, look, I know there's a, there's a list, I think it's like 35 that the Department of Interior identified um, as sort of the critical minerals and you can find it. Yeah, there we go. Um, thank you. Everyone's on top. Thanks, Adriana. Yeah. Everybody's on top of it for me. <laughs> You've got track. quite a team there. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, uh, there's another question. Can you elaborate a bit on the NSF? Uh, I don't know what the how to say that. The Jedi pillar. Be be a, be a Jedi is the, a Jedi. the way that we usually say it. Sure. So um, so there's a lot that's happening at the you know NSF wide, but. Um, let me speak for geo and eAR specifically. So uh, as I'm sure all of you have have read and uh, thought about over the last year or the last few years, even since I think the Bernard and Cooper doc paper was 2018, right? So geosciences is one of the least diverse in all of STEM. Uh, and geo and eAR are really concerned about that. So you know, um, even before last year and uh, we have been thinking about how to impact, how to how to diversify the geosciences community and the earth sciences community. Um, and so there are a few programs at the geo level and at the EAR level that are happening. So I imagine many of you took part in uh, URGE this year, the Unlearning Racism in Geosciences. That's funded out of EAR, um, and we're very happy to support that. So that is was a many month program uh, that involved reading and dialogue and developing anti-racist policies um, for your own working groups and institutions. Um, that was supported by EAR as part of the BI Jedi, BI Jedi um, focus. But even at the NSF level, uh, at the GEO level, there are programs, um, I don't have, someone will find links, maybe I see Russ is here, so maybe Russ will find these links for me. But um, so there's, uh, I use geopaths. So this is specifically about pathways for uh, bringing diverse students uh, into uh, geosciences. There's um, Golden, which is another um, geosciences opportunities for leadership and diversity. That's another geosciences specific um, uh, program that is one of the, one of GEO's real hallmark Jedi opportunities. And then, so there are a few of those, Geopaths and Golden, I think are the two most important. Um, and overall, we're really thinking about how to change um, or incorporate language into our solicitations that is more inclusive and equitable. So we're thinking about it from a very basic structural level within the programs um, and trying to provide opportunities for, for actual funding and support um, you know, at, the, at the program level. Okay, other questions? I, I guess what, actually one thing I would like to maybe have you elaborate on a bit more is, you, you know, a directorate for technology is a huge change for NSF, right? So, so you know, in your internal conversations about this, how are you, how are you getting ready for this? How is it being viewed in, in NSF? I think it'll vary depending on who you talk to. Um, there have been for, for a number of years, there have been a lot of, um, academic industry partnership programs that have been that have gone on especially in engineering um, more so than geo but but um, it's happened in other parts of the agency for a long time um, I don't know I, I honestly I have I don't know how it's going to go it's going to be very interesting to see you know it's always great when our agency gets more funding I hope that that funding also translates to the science directorates that exist uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, everybody's reacting differently, but I think overall, it's it's great that um, 
it's great to be in an era where the agency is appreciated and invested in. And that I think is what everybody is focusing on. So, so growing the agency is generally a good thing. Puts us in a different oversight category, which will be, um, which <laughs> Rush especially, yeah, Russ, Russ just said in the chat, we used to fly under a radar, but given the size that we will now be, we'll be under a different um, threshold of oversight, which will be interesting too. So Ooh, what does that mean? Are you talking about like congressional oversight? Or? Yeah, so because our budget, um, I can't remember what it is, right? Russ, can you remind me what the new budget number will be for the agency? Uh, I I'm, I honestly can't tell you. I did post the um, the budget it's page. Over up. Yeah, it, go, it goes up to, t once you cross out into $10 billion, like, it's a whole new ball game of oversight. And so, um, so we, I don't know what that's going to be like. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I think I got all the questions. Were there any more questions for, for Jennifer? Okay. Well, thanks very much. Greatly appreciate the update and uh, uh, we, we appreciate it. Um, so.